Dude hasn't even announced that he's running for president yet, but I am already sick and tired of Joe Biden. I'm sick and tired of him. Um, because not only is he politically not the best bet, in fact, he's one of the worst bets because he's essentially a moderate Republican. His support of the Iraq War, his support of the 1994 crime bill, his vote for the Patriot Act, these are all disqualifying factors. He doesn't support Medicare for All. He presumably does not support the Green New Deal. I don't think he'd support a federal jobs guarantee. So I am sick of him because politically speaking, he is the worst possible choice to go up against Donald Trump, in my opinion, in an anti-establishment era. But with that being said, we're all now talking about what was obvious to pretty much everyone with the brain who saw through whatever cognitive dissonance was stopping them from seeing him as the creep that he is. And we're talking about the way he's just overly handsy, to put it lightly, with women, including young women. Now, there were two women that decided to come out and share their stories about how Joe Biden touched them in an inappropriate way, and he gave them an unwanted kiss. Lucy Flores says that he kissed the top of her head, and this made them feel uncomfortable. Now, since I talked about their stories, I think it's only fair that I give you Joe Biden's kind of apology video there was no explicit apology but he shares his side of the story and so far i've been completely disgusted with the response people close to him suspect that bernie sanders was involved in basically planting this story and i just think that that's a really grotesque accusation but nonetheless this is what he had to say for himself and I'll tell you my thoughts on that, and then we'll talk about what transpired after he released this video. Folks, in the coming month, I expect to be talking to you about a whole lot of issues, and I'll always be direct with you. But today, I want to talk about gestures of support and encouragement that I've made to women and some men that have made them uncomfortable. And I always try to be, uh, in my career, I've always tried to make a human connection. That's my responsibility, I think. I shake hands, I hug people, I, I grab men and women by the shoulders and say, you can do this. And, and uh, whether they're women, men, young, old, it's, it's the way I've always been. It's the way I've tried to show I care about them and I'm listening. And over the years, knowing what I've been through, the things that I've faced, I've found that scores, if not hundreds of people have come up to me and reached out for solace and comfort, something, something, anything that may help them get through the tragedy they're going through. And, and, uh, and, and so I, it's just, just who, who I am. And I've never thought of politics as cold and antiseptic. I, I've always thought it about connecting with people. As I said, shaking hands, uh, hands on the shoulder, a hug, uh, encouragement. And now, and now it, it's all about taking selfies together. Uh, you know, social norms have begun to change, they've shifted, and the boundaries of protecting personal space have been reset. And I get it. I get it. I hear what they're saying. I understand it. And I'll be much more mindful. That's my responsibility. My responsibility, and I'll meet it. But I always believe governing, quite frankly, life for that matter, is about connecting, about connecting with people. That won't change. But I will be more mindful and respectful of people's personal space. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I've worked my whole life to empower women. I've worked my whole life to prevent abuse. I've written, the, and, and so the idea that I can adjust to the fact that personal space is important, more important than it's ever been, is, is, is just not thinkable. I will, I will. Now, almost immediately after he released this video, three more women came forward. And then shortly after that, two more women came forward, bringing the total number of women speaking out to seven at the time I record this video, because it may actually increase. So this is certainly troubling. Is it disqualifying? I don't know. I don't even think it's important to discuss that question, because even if this may be an unrealistic expectation, I think that we can examine or at least try to examine these allegations in a vacuum, because I think that this conversation ultimately is important. It's something that we need to talk about. We need to talk about how it's vital that we respect personal boundaries, we respect personal space, and we acknowledge that our actions, even if our intent is pure, may come off in a way that makes people feel uncomfortable. So I think it's an important discussion to have. And when I listened to the video, 
I don't like what he says. I don't like what he says. I don't like that he didn't issue an apology. I don't like that he essentially says that social norms are changing because for you to put your hands on someone, play with their hair, give them kisses on the head, I don't think that's ever been appropriate. Now, to be clear, none of these women are alleging that he sexually assaulted them. I don't think it rises to that level, but what they are saying is essentially along the same lines. He kind of made them feel uncomfortable by hugging them and holding on too long. He put his forehead against theirs and it was awkward and made them feel uncomfortable. So, I mean, they're all kind of saying the same thing. This behavior that he's exhibited throughout the years on camera for everyone to see has been super creepy. And it's about time that we talk about it. So the good thing is that his accusation that Bernie Sanders was all behind this kind of fell apart after more women came forward. But it, it's it's a little depressing to me that this is only viewed through the lens of politics. And I get it. He's going to announce that he's running for president soon. So... You know, you can't really extract the politics from the conversation, but I think we should at least try because during the Me Too era, we need to make sure that women feel comfortable sharing their stories. And no, these are not stories that are on par with what Harvey Weinstein did. I don't think I've seen anyone allege that, but it is important that we all become more aware of our actions and become aware of how we can respectfully engage with people in a way that communicates love that he tries to convey to people, but without doing so creepily. But unfortunately, um, this really is kind of becoming politicized because now Donald Trump decided to weaponize this issue and pounce on it. And he posted this video about Joe Biden. But basically, of all people, Donald Trump is the last who should be talking about this. 23 women accused him of doing worse. He endorsed Roy Moore, a pedophile. He painted Brett Kavanaugh as the victim amid rape allegations. He flew on Epstein's sex slave plane, the Lolita Express. He bragged about sexually assaulting women on tape. He says that he grabs women by the genitals he doesn't even wait. So of all people, Donald Trump is the least person that I want to hear from, but it's why it's very difficult to disaggregate the politics from the conversation that we all need to be having that I think would otherwise be constructive, which is why it's unfortunate that, you know, this really is devolving into a conversation about whether or not this is a political hit against Joe Biden. Now, this Michael Tracy tweet kind of also alludes to that. He says, if the goal is to defeat Joe Biden, it should be done politically with substantive arguments about policy and logic and reason and stuff, not Me Too medium posts and making a big scandal out of his hugging practices. Just my two cents. Now, I'm not picking on Michael Tracy, but I think that what he shared here and why I'm talking about his tweet is because it's one example of many bad takes that I've seen. To describe what Joe Biden has been doing for many years as hugging practices is an oversimplification, to put it lightly. But I don't think Michael Tracy is the best judge since he literally thought that an old lady pushed him. And furthermore, we don't need to me to him out of the race. We can beat Joe Biden on the policy substance because he's a conservative. He's a Republican running in a Democratic Party primary. So him versus Bernie, I think we can easily make the case. And yes, he may be polling ahead of Bernie right now, but I think that's going to change when he announces because just by and large, he's a really unlikable guy. But with that being said, should we still be talking about Joe Biden? Absolutely. This is an important conversation that has to be taking place. And I just, I don't understand why so many people are rushing to get us to all shut up about this. I don't know how this is going to affect Joe Biden's political chances. Does this disqualify him? I haven't really touched on that yet. I don't know. I don't really agree that this is disqualifying. Um, but at the same time, I do think that it's extremely disturbing. Like it, it's, it's really downright disgusting and um we need to be talking about this because people in power they've got to be held accountable for their actions if joe biden was just a walmart employee and he didn't have any power and he walked up to a female co-worker and started playing with her hair and grabbing her face and kissing her on the head if she complained to hr at a minimum that walmart employee would be written up 
possibly terminated. So the fact that everyone is rushing to defend someone with power, it really speaks to a broader issue in American discourse that people in power are held to a completely different standard than people with no power. We shouldn't allow Joe Biden to skirt any culpability or not take responsibility or not have to take responsibility just because he's Joe Biden, just because he's a former vice president. I think we need to hold him as a human being and a man to the same exact standard that we would hold anyone else to. So the fact that so many supposedly left-leaning individuals, mainly people in mainstream media like Anna Navarro, are rushing to defend him and shut down this really important conversation that we're having I find it incredibly disgusting. This is something we need to talk about. This is something as a country we need to talk about and grapple with. And yes, this doesn't rise to the level of sexual assault, but nonetheless, it still is something that is related to the Me Too movement, even if you think it's only tangentially related. But I think that we're in this era where we need to talk about how women have been silenced, have been told to shut up, whenever they express, you know, their discomfort with the actions of men. And I think that that's not acceptable. So we need to, on the left, facilitate an environment where women don't feel like they're going to be attacked, like Lucy Flores was attacked for speaking out. We need to make sure that people can express their concerns without assuming that there's some type of political agenda that is causing them to want to speak out. We can't do what Republicans do and not hold people on the left, or in this case, the center right, to the same standard that we hold Republicans to. And I think that a lot of people on the left in mainstream media, namely, are proving that they are not just hypocrites, but political hacks. Because if your team does it, it's okay. But if the other team does it, you're going to pounce on them. That is a horrible way to win over anybody on the right or in the center. It's an easy way to discredit yourself and make it seem like you don't care about the actual issues, you just care about the personalities. So, no, I say fuck that, let's talk about this and let's grapple with this really important conversation that we should be having related to this type of behavior, not just Joe Biden, but this type of behavior in general.